Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 200, Freddy at the Ready. One early morning on the Scarloe Railway, the engines had just awoken when Sir Topham Hatt walked up. Good morning, everyone, he said. Good morning, sir, replied the engines. I wanted to come here myself and congratulate you all on a magnificent summer. We've had a record number of visitors to the railway this year, and the rave reviews keep flooding in. You should all be very proud of yourselves. The engines couldn't help but blush. It was rare that Sir Topham Hatt openly praised them like this. However, I have some other news to deliver. My duties as controller of the Sodor Railway continue to grow every day, and it appears the bigger engines need more help and attention than you do. Therefore, I've decided it's time for you all to have your own controller. The engines were shocked. Sir Topham had it always been the man in charge, and now he was abdicating his duties to another person. Well, this is quite a surprise, said Reneus. Who is going to be our new controller? Well, I was hoping to introduce him to you all this morning, but he was supposed to meet me here, and I don't see him yet. I guess that will have to wait until another day. Just then, a tall, lanky man came running up. I'm so sorry, Topham, he gasped. I had a flat tire on my bicycle, and I had to catch the bus and run the rest of the way here. I know it's extremely unprofessional of me to be late on the first day of work. And oh bother, it appears I've worn the same suit as you. Terribly sorry, sir. Sir Topham Hatt laughed. Don't worry, it looks quite good on you, Peregrine. Everyone, meet Mr. Percival, your new controller. Hello, sir, said the engines. Even though Mr. Percival will be running the day-to-day -day operations on this railway from now on, I'll still be keeping an eye on things. So no funny business. That means you, Duncan. What? What did I do? He stammered. You've got no proof it was me. I'm innocent. I swear. The other engines giggled. Sir Topham Hatt turned to Mr. Percival. Good luck, and I'll see how you're doing in a few days from now and Sir Topham Hatt walked away. All right then, said Mr. Percival. First thing you should know, I'm a stickler for the rules. Safety always comes first, but most importantly, let's have some fun together, shall we? I think that's a great idea, said Scarloe, and the rest of the engines murmured in agreement. Excellent. Now I'll do my best to learn your names as fast as possible, but for now, I'll just call you by your numbers. Let's see, number three and number four. You two run the passenger trains today. Numbers one, two, and six. You're on incline duty. And number seven, go and get me a report from the engine that runs the steamworks. The engines whistled happily and set off to do their work. Freddy quickly puffed away to his destination, but he soon realized that Ivo Hugh was following him. Um, hi back there, he called. Where are you off to today? Oh, just some silly errand to the steamworks and back, he replied. What about you? Uh, same thing, actually. I think you misheard the new controller. I'm the one who's supposed to go talk to Victor. No, that's my job, insisted Ivo Hugh. He said that number seven should go. And I am going, countered Freddy. The two engines eventually stopped at the wharf. They were becoming increasingly frustrated with each other. Look at the side of my cab, ordered Freddy. What does that look like to you? I can't see the side of your cab from here, but I know for a fact that I have the number seven. You both do, shouted Colin. My, my, what a ruckus. Now let's move on, shall we? What do you mean, we both do? asked Freddy. Yes, you both have the number seven on your sides. Since when? asked Ivo Hugh. Since anybody can remember, replied Colin. Have you two really never noticed that before? Oh boy, just wait until I tell you about Sir Handel and Peter Sam's old names. We know about that, said Freddy wearily. I just can't believe this. The whole time on this railway, 
I thought I was special. Turns out I've been sharing the same number with another engine. Yeah, this isn't right, insisted Ivo Hugh. What should we do? Well, let's finish our job first and then go talk to Sir Topham, H I mean, uh, Mr. Percival, about it. The two engines managed to put their disagreement aside long enough for them to go talk to Victor and Kevin at the steamworks. That afternoon, they returned to Ulfstead Castle, where Mr. Percival was waiting. Ah, uh, yes, I believe your name is Fearless Freddy, and if I recall, you are Ivo Hugh. See, I'm getting better at this name thing. Well, you could just look at our nameplates, muttered Ivo Hugh quietly. Sir, there is a problem we need to talk to you about, said Freddy. Ivo Hugh and I have never noticed this, but apparently we are both labeled as the number seven engine for this railway. And when you said that number seven engine should go to the steamworks this morning, we both did because we didn't know what else to do. Hmm, I see, said Mr. Percival. This is a problem. I certainly don't need two engines to go do the simple task of checking up on the steamworks. To prevent issues like this from reoccurring in the future, I'll have one of you renumbered, and this problem will be solved. The two engines looked uneasily at each other. Yes, sir, but who should be the one to change his number? asked Ivo Hugh. Oh, figure it out amongst yourselves. But by tomorrow, I want only one number seven engine on this railway. Now, have any of you seen an engine named Mac? Um, yes, he's right over there, said Freddy. No, apparently that's mighty, said Mr. Percival. I already talked to him and now I need to find this Mac engine. If I remember from my notes correctly, he and Mighty are very close, though. Yes, they are extremely close, said Freddy amusingly. You couldn't separate them even if you tried, added Ivo Hugh, and the two engines puffed away. That night, Freddy and Ivo Hugh were still conflicted about Mr. Percival's decision. Sir Topham Hatt would have never have done that, said Peter Sam. He understands the importance of names and numbers to engines. Unlike Mr. Parakeet Percival or whoever he is. I guess you two will have to compete to see who's worthiest of the number, chuckled Sir Handel. If only there was an easy way to figure that out. Like a race or something. Well, remember how we used to solve our problems? We would hold that competition. A race around Sodor, remember? That's what you guys should do. But Ivo, Hugh, and Freddy were a little uncertain. It's not that big of a deal. I'm sure we can work this out some other way. But Sir Handel and Peter Sam were incessant. It's how we do things on the Scarlowy Railway, they said. And it will be quite entertaining. Eventually, Ivo, Hugh smiled. It's just a silly race, he said. You up for the challenge? Sure, why not, replied Freddy. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. The two engines looked at each other's numbers. The following morning, everything would be decided.